We all feel stuck sometimes, and we're all stubborn in different areas of our life. This week on the 167, we're going to tackle stubbornness and how we can overcome that in our lives and others. Welcome to the 167. Hey, welcome to the 167. I'm Pastor Lucas. With me here is Ryan Ellis. Hello. Good morning, Ryan Ellis. He's going to be directing this experience since he is the experience director. Experience directed. There you go. That was almost like a little cross your heart thing. but mm, yeah. a little Well, bit. I was going to go with band director, then I thought like traffic direct. It's just kind of yeah. It, it's a really total experience. And our senior pastor here, Rick George, who's going to be directing the director's the real director. The real director. Well, good morning. It's good to be here. So uh, this week we're still in our series, I Feel Stuck. And I think this is, I'm glad that you're preaching on this. I thought it was a great message this week. Um, I think so many people feel like this in, it's just about like what area. Do you feel stuck in your marriage? Do you feel stuck at work? Do you feel stuck, you know, with your kids and, you know, like kind of in a, in a parenting rut? I think that a lot of us get stuck at different seasons of our life, but we've also been talking about the life of Moses. Yeah. So I, I agree. I mean, we're, if you, if you live long enough, you're going to get stuck somewhere. And it's, so it's not a matter of if you're going to get stuck, it's when you get stuck, how do you get unstuck? How do you keep moving? How do you get from where you are stuck to where God wants you to be free and living life to the fullest? Well, this week you were talking about stubbornness, and I felt like this was one of those weeks where everybody kept giving each other significant Mm -hmm. looks across the room. We'd be like, are you stubborn? And it was like, just look forward. Don't look at anybody. Yeah, I had a number of people say that uh, they had to elbow the person next to them or, you know, their wife or their husband or, this is for you. And it's like... I'm a, like, I, I put that sermon actually on the shelf this week so that, like, every time that I'm, like, in a fight with my kids and be like, go watch Pastor Rick's message again. There you go. So we've been talking about stubbornness. So I was just going to start off with, can you remember a time where you got stuck because of your stubbornness? No, I'm not really stubborn. I just have a certain way of doing things, and I don't like to change them. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so I just keep doing them. But I'm, I mean, that's different than being stubborn. And I'm not changing my mind either. So don't try to. It's just the way it is. <laughs> it is like, it is the ultimate trap, but also the ultimate irony. Whenever time you look at somebody and go, you know, you're just being stubborn. They're like, no, I'm not. Yeah. You're like, uh. Yeah. I think um, for me, I, I definitely feel like there's an area that I, I struggle with that. And that's being um, like impatient. I'm, I'm very stubborn in that area where I'm like, I, if I want it, I want it done now. Mm-hmm. And that has caused me to get stuck many times, many, many times, because I will try to rush the situation. I think if I can just do it, like if I can just get from point A to point B the fastest, just mm-hmm. it'll just be so efficient and it'll happen. And I don't know how many times that I've found myself then uh, stuck waiting because I tried to rush it so much. And it's just beyond frustrating to me because... At that point, all you can do is look back and go, I caused all of this. This mm-hmm. was because I was stubborn and I did not listen and I did not wait. Mm-hmm. And um, you find yourself then waiting longer because of your, because I was stubborn in that. And, uh, you know, Matthew uh, 6, 26 talks about looking at the birds. Doesn't God take care of them? And doesn't he love you more than those? Um, and that is something that is, always been with me but it just seems in the moment when i need to wait i just get stubborn about it and i just think oh no i got this i'll just just get out of the way i'll, I'll take care of it and then it's like dang it should have waited <laughs> should have waited yep i would say <clears throat> in my life the the areas more than one but the areas uh, where i see my stubbornness are in areas that i have done something uh, it was successful. It worked. It it was a good plan. It was a good way. And so, well, that's the way you should always do it. Mm. Right. And so mm-hmm. when, when a new way is presented or an alternative, yeah, then it's no, 
Like I know how to do this, even though the other way might be good. It's, well, it's not the way. And I think everyone struggles with that in some form or fashion. Oh yeah. You know, so it's the way I do it. Well, there's another way. No, there's not. Like there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And your way's the wrong way. My way's the right way because I've done it before and it worked. This feels like whenever you're, you know, you always drive to your aunt or your uncles or your grandpa's when you're younger and there was the one way to take. And you're like, no, and you get older and you realize, oh, there's a highway to get there. Yeah. And your dad tells you like, nope, that's not the way to go. And you go this <laughs> County Road X to County yeah. Road Z and you get there. <laughs> well, so some of my stubbornness is in regards to when you mentioned that, it just triggered. <laughs> so when you uh, are going somewhere, do you guys use like Google Maps or Siri? Yeah, or, yeah. depending you know, on what it is. But yeah, yeah, so you're going somewhere and it'll say, uh, okay, go here, go south, go, you know, take this road. And sometimes I'm like, no, that's just dumb. That Like there's no reason to <laughs> yes. go that way. Right. Have you ever done that? Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's like I know more than GPS maps or whatever. And then you, it has happened maybe once. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, where you don't go the way it says to go, and then it's like, well, when did this construction? You know, we're stuck in traffic. It's like, that's why they were taking you the other way. You get there, and the road is actually gone. <laughs> it's you got to zoom in on those, yeah. and you find out it's like this tiny little red. Yeah. yeah. And so that stubbornness of, no, I know how to get there. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no reason to put the airport <laughs> in GPS, because I yeah. know how to get there. And you're like, yeah, well, if you just followed the instructions... Right. Have you, have, you Very, know, I've definitely gone up to the road close to through traffic and be yeah. like, let's see how far yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, <laughs> this yeah. goes. I don't think that really means yeah. it's really closed. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. It's very famously like Chris would always hassle me because I know, I always tell her, I know one way to get there. So if you took me to your house from my house, I know how to get there from there. And then, so if I ended up in some other part of the city and they'd be like, go to Ryan's house. I would literally have to drive back to my house and then drive that route. <laughs> Restart the... From yeah, because like I'm like this is the way that I know how to go. Yeah, I'm not like the guy that's like just head due east. Mm. So, but like I I think about that where my stubbornness is almost is kind of the opposite of that where it's like if I feel like you know if I am encountering somebody like I don't know how to walk away from that situation. Mm. You know, so if I'm in that in the midst of this and I'm telling somebody like hey listen, you know like the, you know if it would be like hey don't go into the city because they're doing construction on route 70. You make sure you avoid the city. And they were like, no, I'm going to the city. I'd be like, you don't understand. <laughs> and I would just like, I just keep telling myself if I can just explain it well enough, if I can just do this, they will eventually agree with me. And I'm like, I don't know how to walk away. Sometimes I do that with my own children. Well, I have teenagers and they're of course convinced that they know, Oh yes. You know, stuff. And I'm like, maybe if I say it a different way, you know, just like, and I'm like, yeah, eventually you get to the point where you're like, I have wasted an hour and a half of my time. You yeah. care too much. Well, I just, I get stubborn. I'm like, I, I feel like I'm like, no, no, no. If I can, I feel like I can overcome yeah. other I, people's stubbornness. Yeah. I'm not stubborn. I'm just trying to prove a point. Yes. Right. And I'm just, yeah. just listen to me. And if you, if you can't get it, then I just have to keep proving it or I have to explain it better. Because if I could just explain it well enough, you would agree with me. That's a really good segue into the next question. But it is, which is, you know, we talked about a lot of times Christians have this perception that if I just do what is right, God will give me whatever I want. You know, I behave well, you know, and so I'm never going to get stuck in my life because God's just going to clear the path for me. But in our story this week, we were talking about Moses. And if God, if Moses does what God tells him to do, he has to go and confront Pharaoh mm -hmm. in Pharaoh's hard heart and his stubbornness. And so I just wrote the question, what are we to do in seasons where people around us are resisting God? Like when you end up in that conversation where you're trying to tell somebody like, hey, this is what God has called for me or this is what God's called for you. What are we to do when we encounter people in that? Uh, faithful and obedient. I mean, those are two words that it's what, Moses and Aaron were given a task. They fulfilled, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. And it was met with resistance. Right? So it didn't, it wasn't smooth. It, it created more problems. They went back to God and God said, 
okay, well, the plan is still the same. Just go back okay, and continue to do what I told you to do. Be faithful, be obedient. Uh, the prophet, like Jeremiah, like what a horrible job he had. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> it's like, God, I am being faithful. I'm doing, and like it was miserable. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't like Jeremiah just went out and preached and everyone said, oh, you're such a good man. Like you, the words that you're speaking are just soothing to us. No, he was like, "Hey, like, it's going to get really bad." And uh, but he was doing what God told him to do, mm-hmm. and it was hard. You just have to remain faithful and obedient, and do what God has called you to do, and you trust Him for the results. Our stubbornness is no, I know what the result should be, and this didn't work out. So I'm going to do it my way. And then God's like, no, here's what I want you. No, I know how to do it. And, and we get stubborn and locked in and hard headed and it creates problems. But, uh, ultimately it's just two words, just be faithful, be obedient, and then ultimately trust God to take care of all the details, which this coming week, we're going to look at another example of that. So be here on Sunday. There you go. It's going to be good. Um, that teaser. Yeah, it's a teaser. So, But I'll ask you kind of a follow-up question, Ryan. You can comment on this too. Is So what's the difference then between faithfulness and stubbornness? Is it just what's good and bad? Because mm-hmm. I th- when you were talking about Jeremiah, I also thought of Hosea, who God tells him you have to marry this woman and be faithful to her, and she keeps going back to becoming a temple prostitute. She keeps going back into sin, and... He has to have, like I don't know if it's the gentleness aspect of it where he has to go and take her out of the temple again. And so you could say, you know, I'm sure at some point they had a fight and she's just like, just let me go. You're so stubborn, yeah. you know? And it's like, what's the difference between being faithful for what, like, is it is being faithful just being stubborn for God or is it? Yeah, I think, so in my perspective of that, like stubborn is very focused on selfishness. It's something I will do because I have always done it this way or I think this about it. And faithfulness is almost more like steadfastness as in, I don't really know the answer, but no matter what, I'm going to keep thinking that you do, God, and I'm just going to keep trusting you and I'm going to keep following you in those things. You know, it's amazing when you look at this, the Bible, especially the Old Testament, like there is almost no situation you can't contrast to us and our struggles and our um, need for deliverance and all those things. And so if you look at it in the modern culture right now, obviously uh, I can't imagine what it was like back when the plagues were happening. Um, just if they would have had social media back then, like <laughs> today's like frogs, these, look at these frogs, frogs everywhere, hashtags, frogs are everywhere, you know? So, uh, you know, but if you look at it in contrast to our current culture, uh, while we're not, you know, you know, swimming in frogs, we're dealing with things that we would think that are impossible to deal with. And we have to have a steadfastness or a faith that is so deep to think that God is going to deliver us out of these things that we are dealing with. Or we can cave to culture and say, well, maybe, maybe those magicians are just as powerful. I mean, we saw that. Mm-hmm. Everybody saw the videos of him doing those same things. And or, you know, what that would look like now is like... I David mean, Blaine. Yeah. Throwing a, <laughs> or oh like, my gosh, this, this, their stop church, it, David Blaine. Yeah, their church is saying they love people no matter what. They're affirming them and no matter what. Maybe that is the right way. That feels like God, but it's just a little bit off. It's just a little skewed. Yeah, so I think, again, these great examples of how to stay steadfast, you know, and having that faithfulness that is so deep and that obedience is that no matter what happens here, I'm going to stick to what the word says. And I know that God's promises are true and that he delivers them. And so he will deliver us. So stubbornness, I I think it is perspective. Words matter. The words that you use matter. Um, And I think in our culture, in our understanding of the word stubborn, it has a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Okay, Whereas faithfulness or steadfastness has a more positive connotation, but they are very similar. So the dictionary's definition of stubborn is having or showing dogged determination not to change one's attitude or position on something, especially in spite 
of good arguments or reasons to do so. Mm. In spite. Right. And so when someone says, this is a bad idea, and you say, I am not changing. Like, I don't care if it's a bad idea. You might think so, but I know better, and I'm going to do it. Okay. Yeah. So when that's for selfish desire, fulfillment, whatever, that's a negative thing. But you apply that to your faith, and when people say, there is no good reason for you to believe God in this situation, mm. for your healing, for your ministry, for your family, for whatever, it's just, it's futile. And for you to have this dogged determination that says, I don't care if what you're saying makes sense, like I am following God, and I am not letting go. That's steadfastness, but it's also stubborn right. but stubborn has that negative yeah well and i think too one of the things that you guys are both touching on there is the difference between believing in myself and my own understanding and leaning on my own understanding and leaning in a promise mm. so in the same way so if you put it in an earthly context if you know it's it's the story where the hero says i'll come back for you and then the rest of the movie she's like he's gonna come back like that's a faith and a belief that someone's going to do what they said they were going to do. And yes, that can be a, you know, stubborn thing, but I, but I, I agree that stubbornness is almost like this in spite of, you know, like in spite of any, any evidence. And I'm like, for God, we have plenty of good evidence. Mm -hmm. You know, we have plenty of good evidence that God's going to do what he says he's going to do, that he's delivered in the past, that he's given us these promises in the scripture with our, our own stubbornness. A lot of times it's a, myopic lack of perspective rather than you know yeah. being able to say look you know here's this you know this track yeah. record yeah so the I, I guess just for clarification maybe the stubbornness is more of that um fleshly hard-heartedness you know kind yeah. of a the steadfastness is more of the spiritual mm -hmm. godly side um but they <laughs> they're essentially the same thing with coming from two different attitudes or it's the two sides of the same yeah. coin. There's a, an episode of the office. I like to go back to that where they're listening to a GPS and Michael's seen right that. there. And literally there's a lake right to the right of him. He said, it says to turn right. He goes, not right here. He goes, yeah, it says right here. He goes, no, Michael, there's a lake right here. <laughs> and he just, in his stubbornness, he just drives into the lake because he was being told to go. And then in the interview, <laughs> he goes, GPS tried to kill me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's, it's supposed to veer right or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's a veer right, not a right turn. It's a lake. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things we were also talking about this week is you made a, a thing that, I, again, I just want to play this on repeat for my children, but I probably need to, play it and repeat it in my own head is you said partial obedience is still disobedience tell me just yep. a little bit about that i'll ask you a follow-up question on it, but uh it's our bargaining with god everyone is mm. uh, guilty at some point of doing this when you know what you're supposed to do but you don't want to do it so you kind of do it so like the example would be when you have kids and you say go clean your room and they go in and they pick up two toys and then they come out. It's like, well, I did. Well, no, you didn't. Two toys but, is pretty good, honestly. Yeah. So you, you went in and you made a half-hearted effort at doing something, hoping that it would appease mom and dad, hoping that they would say, okay, good enough. Okay. So the specifics of how that applies to us, and I'll just give you the what I think is one of the probably top three is in regards to tithing or financial giving. Mm. Not many people have a, a total lack of understanding of what the Bible says about giving and tithing. They get it. They see it. They know what the tithe is. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say things like, well, you know, I'm giving $10, $20, $50. Okay, maybe I'll give 100 It's like, so... But I'm giving, right? I'm, and they'll even use the words like, well, you know, I'm tithing $50 a week. No, you're not tithing. You're tipping. You're, you're throwing something, hoping that it'll be enough. Yeah. And it, it'd be like going to a restaurant and saying, I'm, I had a great meal. It's $100. We went out for our anniversary, $100 meal. 
I'm not going to pay for the meal, but I'm going to give the server a little extra tip because they did a great job. Mm -hmm. right? So hopefully that'll cover it. It's like, no, you didn't pay for your meal. Right? And so um, we, we try to financially say, well, I'll give a little, right? And I'll do my part. And, but there's other areas, but that's probably in the top three. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, I think it's definitely up there. And I think a lot of times in that same issue, and but kind of in a more broad way, I think that people thrive on technicality. Like you mm -hmm. said, like when, I, when you said that, like, did you go pick up your room? Of course I did. And it's like, but you picked up two toys. Well, that is picking up. You yeah. know, it's like, I don't know if your kids ever did yeah. that. Where oh, it's yeah. like, it's a technicality. Well, what I actually said was, and I'm like, no, 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 you did not do the heart of what this was supposed to be. Yeah, quit, it, t quit touching each other. And yeah. then they're like right there. I'm not touching them. And they yeah. put their finger right next to them. And I think people do that with stubbornness and with partial obedience with God where it's like, hey, I want you to forgive this person. Okay, I forgive this person. And it's like, well, you're still angry at them. Well, I said that I forget. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. That's a technicality. Like you're, we try and twist these things so that we can still stay stubborn on those yeah. issues. And it always results back to that you questioning that big question of is it that big of a deal mm -hmm. is it really that big of a deal and again going back to the old testament there are stories after stories after stories of is it that big of a deal yes well, literally you know from adam and eve on god would give them specific details don't let those you know and when they would conquer cities don't take any of their treasure. Don't take any of their women. Is it that big of a deal? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Now you are done. Now we're going to move on. Like, I mean, literally story after story of, is it that big of a deal? Yes, it's that big of a deal. Yeah, so when you go back to the Old Testament, when you say that, it's like wipe out everything. And they would wipe out 95%. And they're like, mm -hmm. well, this was some really good stuff. So they were partially obedient. Like they did it for the most part, but not fully. Ask Moses, is it that yeah. big of a deal? Well, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't, I don't know what you, which story you're preaching on this coming week, but I assume it's not in Numbers. No. But, so in Numbers, where God tells him, "Speak to the rock." Yeah. Or first time it's strike the rock, right? And then he strikes the rock, and then he's like, "Now speak to the rock." And he goes out and he hits, smacks the rock again, and you're just like, and then the water's poisoned. <laughs> it's yeah. just yeah. like, oh, it's like it's the small details mm -hmm. that matter when it comes to obedience. And I think we all know that intuitively, if your boss tells you to go do something. And it's like, hey, put these boxes over there, and then you go put them somewhere else. And you're like, well, I thought they'd be better over there. It's like, yeah. now I'm going to have to make you do it again. So, yeah. yeah, and the way that translates now is, so fast forward through the Old Testament, Jesus comes, saves us all, and now we have a gift of salvation, right? There's nothing we can do to earn that or to give it back. So you come as a modern-day Christian, and you accept that gift, and now you start asking yourself for the other things, is it that big of a deal? Is it that big of a deal that I look at those things or that I don't give the way I should or that I, my mouth does not reflect the heart of God? Is it that big of a deal? And I think that we will find out that it's that big of a deal. You know, where your heart is, where your relationship is with God, how you reflect to other people, um, it's that big of a deal. Well, I think it uh, revolves a lot around pride. Our stubbornness is always, I feel like, tied oh, to yeah. pride. And it, it becomes that. It's like, well, I have judged you know, it's like, well, God told me this, but I have judged that this is actually better. And you just want to look at people and go, so God told you to do this. And you think that you like that God was up there going, oh, my gosh, like Lucas yeah. found a better way to do this. I thought <laughs> that this was going to be great. And like, man, that Lucas, he's smarter than I am. Like, There's like a story about that. I think it's in Genesis, Adam yeah. and Eve, something about yeah. you think yeah. you think he knows best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God doesn't. Really he's know. testing you. Yeah. It's a trick. The last follow-up question I just want to do uh, really quick, we have about five minutes left, is just what would your advice be to somebody who is caught in the effects of someone else's stubbornness? Mm. That someone in their life is being stubborn, and then they're sitting there going, you know, do they just, well, cast not your pearls before swine and walk away from them, or do you persist? Like, what is, what's your advice to somebody who's kind of caught in someone else's stubbornness? That's a tough one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is punching them in the face <laughs> off the off the table or is that an option <laughs> i think that you're giving them an opportunity to turn the other cheek to you there you go so <laughs> like punch the other. <laughs> smack the other one just kidding kind of 
Um, Disclaimer. Slap ties. So I think every, yeah, it's like a lot of other things in life. Every situation's a little different. Uh, but there are times when in the midst of someone's uh, destruction or destructive patterns, their stubbornness, and you can see it and you've spoken to it and they're not willing to change. Um, sometimes it's just, hey, I'm, I've got to cut ties. Yeah. Like I, or at least is, a boundary. Yeah. It's like, this is not working. And, um, you know, last night we had a conversation, uh, in the lesson we were going through, um, where it said, sometimes God just gives you what you want. And that's a hard thing mm. when you're stubborn and you want to do it your way and you're rejecting God. It's so someone who, um, refuses to give their life to Christ and they're so stubborn and resistant, the worst thing that can happen is for God to then finally say, okay, I'll give you what you want. Mm -hmm. And again, this past week when I talked about hitting rock bottom, well, sometimes as a friend, if you have a friend who's you know, caught up in some addiction and you see this is destructive and their stubbornness keeps resisting your... Um, offers for help. And sometimes what is best is to say, you know what, I'm just going to give you what you want and you just, you go. And it's that, you know, the term that we've used in the past is tough love, mm -hmm. you know, where you say, okay, I'm done. I'm, I still love you. Right? I'm not giving up on you, but I'm like, I'm kind of walking away. I, I can't. Yeah. And I think that's the hardest moment is to know where where you are willing to go and where you're not, because that that's essentially what you're talking about is going, hey, if you want to go do this, that's fine. But a lot of times people are like, well, I want you to come with me. No, that's where we're like, yeah. I can't do that. And so, if, if you may you not want... be in a season of being able to do that, but yeah. I think the follow up to that is that in Philippians, you know, Paul says to never stop praying. That's mm -hmm. the thing that you can do. You may not be able to keep following them, but you can never stop praying for them, and um, they will they will come back to that when God when God reconciles them back to that. They will say, "I remember you. You never stopped praying for me. Thank you for loving me through that." Yeah. So you, we're back where we were several minutes ago with stubbornness and steadfastness, mm -hmm. and for the stubborn, it's that person who you know they're going the wrong direction, and they are so stubborn, so hard hearted, or hard headed. And they're like, I am not listening to you. This is what I want. This is the direction I'm going. And I know more than you know. And that stubbornness has taken them one direction. Then at some point you have to say, I'm not going down that road with you. I'm not playing the game with you. I am going to be, again, not stubborn. I'm going to be steadfast in my belief in God, in my trust in him. And I trust him enough. I'm going to have to let you go. Like I'm, I'm not going to keep yeah, going I'm, down this road. I'm going to be the father and the prodigal son that stands at the yeah. stands at the boundary of my property, looking yeah. towards the road for you to come yeah. back. But I can't go with you. Yeah, that's good. We're going to finish up the series next week, and so we hope that you join us uh, online at newlifegardener.com and join us back here at 167 next week. If you enjoyed this episode of the 167, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, get notified, leave a five star rating and a positive review. Tell all your friends to listen as well. Make sure you go over to newlifegardener.com and check out all that we have to offer as a church and check out our messages online as well. Thanks for listening.